Guys, my sponsor MMORG is a site that gives you fast and cheap and easy coins for NBA 2K17, NBA Live Mobile, Madden Mobile, whatever you need. And use my code BD for a 6% discount on your purchase. Guys, before we start this video, I'm sorry I have not uploaded in a week. I actually did post a video about a LeBron and MJ debate, but I did delete it a couple hours later due to the fact that I really thought it was the, the subject was really saturated on YouTube, and, and no one really wanted to watch it anyway. So I deleted the video, and now I have this one. When you think of the greatest power forwards of all time, you might think of Tim Duncan, you might think of Dirk Nowitzki, and you might think of Charles Barkley. Now, a player that is very underrated in this subject is Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett is the greatest power forward to ever play the game, and here is why. Hey guys, my name is TSD, and I'm going to be talking about why Kevin Garnett is the greatest power forward in NBA history. So the first objection will probably be that Tim Duncan is a better player than Kevin Garnett. The big fundamental, he has more rings, finals MVPs, MVPs, and all NBA first team selections. When you break down the career stats, the two players are quite similar, with Garnett having a more dominant prime and Duncan having a more prolonged prime. However, one cannot deny that Duncan overall has a better career. Duncan, being a 15-time All-Star, has done it all in the past two decades. And even at 39 years old, he was the best player on the Spurs. He did it all quietly and consistently, which is one of the reasons why many hardcore NBA fans are quick to try and give him the titles of the best power forward of all time. Yet, they are wrong. Duncan is a better player than Kevin Garnett. There is really no doubt in that. However, the conversation is about the best power forward of all time, and I truly believe that Kevin Garnett is the best. Duncan actually played half of his career at center. In fact, from ages 30 to 37, Tim Duncan was the center for the Spurs, not power forward. In addition to this, Duncan has played more like a center than a power forward for a great deal of his career. For his career, Tim Duncan has averaged other, under 20% from the three-point line and under 70% from the free throw line. This doesn't necessarily discredit his greatness, but rather implies that he played closer to the basket, much like a traditional center. Garnett, on the other hand, has played power forward from ages 21 to 34. Garnett's numbers during his time was astronomical, and he averaged 20.4 points per game, 11.3 rebounds per game, and 37 minutes a game during that time. In addition, Garnett averaged 50% from the field and 80% from the free throw line, while averaging over 4 assists and 1.5 blocks and 1.5 steals per game. The versatility that Garnett brought to the power forward position was unreal. Like Duncan, Garnett also did not play power forward for his whole career. His first three years in the league, he actually played small forward, and three years in Boston, he played center. However, this is a more of a testament to his versatility than anything else, being that he could play small forward and center, as well as his natural power forward position. Unlike Duncan, who could never guard the corners and stretch the floor as a defender, Garnett could do it all. Garnett could guard the wing, play down low, and even carry the ball up the court like a point guard, as many Timberwolves fans would know. The fact that Garnett averaged almost as many steals as blocks illustrates how dynamic a defender he was. Garnett truly revolutionized the power forward position for years to come. Dirk Nowitzki actually did it as well, although Dirk Nowitzki was never the type of defender or rebounder that Garnett was. However, I truly believe that Dirk Nowitzki is the best threat for of all time, but that discussion is for another video. Let's talk about some power forwards here. Barkley also stretched the floor like Garnett did, but a lack of defense and posting postseason success really hurts his case. And, Mal and Carl Malone was an animal, one of the best scorers, and perhaps one can make a case that he's the best power forward of all time. However, lack of championships despite jumping ship to the Lakers and averaging under a block game for his career makes him a less, less likely candidate. In conclusion, guys, I do believe Tim Duncan is a better player, all-around player than Garnett, and he has the potential to rival Kobe for the best player of the 2000 decade along with LeBron. Many people have recognized how underappreciated that Tim Duncan is and want to give him the best title of something. Whether it be the power forward position, defender, teammate, champion, it doesn't matter. Since the power forward position has been historically weak and since Duncan has played a decent amount of power forward, they would just automatically give the title to Duncan. I'm not trying to hurt Duncan in this case, but this is what a lot of fans do, especially Spurs fans because, you know, they're homers. But that's every other fan. Now, giving that title to Duncan, I believe that is a mistake. He's one of the best to play in the era, and he's one of the best of all time, and deserves to be recognized as a top player of all time. He's just not the best power forward of all time. Kevin Garnett revolutionized the NBA. He was the first player in two decades to come straight out of high school, and he led the Timberwolves franchise to the playoffs year after year with much less help than other All-Stars had. 
Garnett was the main reason that the Celtics won a championship in 2008. Garnett is a 15-time All-Star, MVP, All-Star MVP, and Defensive Player of the Year. He has been named to an All-NBA team nine times, All-Defensive team nine times, and he's won four rebound titles. He is also the greatest power forward to ever play the game of basketball. Guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is TSD, and peace out.